Hello and welcome back to the building of the Keelcraft Ladybird. This is by way of a short video to share some of the little jobs that I've been pushing on with since the fuselage build part three. And the most obvious one is the addition here of the undercarriage. Um, I got into a world of pain with this because I didn't realise the difficulty I was going to have installing it. I, ha I deliberately left it off so that I could use this jig to um, ensure that the fuselage was square and it's much easier without the undercarriage in the way. However, life became extremely difficult trying to get it past the engine bearers. Um, but no matter, we got there in the end. So they're, they're now in place. I'm thinking about soldering on a little tab here and putting some sort of fairing onto the wheels. I'm not going to strengthen them up anymore because I don't think they're really, they're way over the top in terms of diameter. They're more than strong enough. Another little job, I haven't installed this yet, but I had to make a replacement part because the other one's gone missing. Obviously through time it fell out of the box or something like that. But I'm not going to install that yet because I need to make a fuel tank for this DC Spitfire. And access will get difficult if I start boxing this in and this is meant to be sheeted as well. Clearly I have to think carefully about the stringers and access for radio gear. But the big development is actually at the other end. And if I just set the tripod up. You can see that I've now finished this rather complex fin arrangement, although none of it's really been rubbed down or sanded down, to facilitate the radio control. What I've actually done is I've doubled the size of the rudder area. The rudder area itself was approximately about the size that you can see in this solid piece of wood. So I've actually increased that. I'd say by about another 100%. I think it'll be operated, in fact, I'm almost certain it'll be operated through a pull-pull system with um, guide tubes running here and perhaps coming through a, a piece of sheeting here. And that will run onto a horn that goes through. So I think that'll provide more than enough area to uh, give some control. The elevator... Once I have, I've made the tail surface, the elevator will actually protrude out the rear and that will be a simple um, push rod arrangement, I think. But if we step back a little bit so you can see the whole thing, I think it looks rather attractive. And I hope that you've enjoyed the journey so far and we'll carry on. And the next task will be to start thinking about the radio installation. I am thinking that the push rod for the elevator will actually be operated by a servo that's in here, near the rear. Because I do anticipate that it'll probably be nose heavy and additional weight here would be advantageous. And once it's installed, I would simply tissue over the top. If I needed to get to it, I would cut, it, cut the tissue out and then reapply it. But there we go. I'll actually put the wings on so you can see what it looks like. Just bear with me a second. We are all guilty of this, aren't we? Every now and again we'll put things together to see what it looks like. And there's only really the tail surface to do, plus of course the radio gear and a little bit of sheeting. There we go. I think it looks rather nice. So thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. It really helps. Um, I hope you stay tuned for the continuing adventures. And with a bit of luck, whether there may be a wind of opportunity, I might get flying. Um, if I can, brilliant. If I can't, I'll get back to building. I hope you can enjoy the hobby as much as I've been enjoying this journey. Thanks for watching now. Take care.